Welcome to the Mountain View Church of Christ. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And now, open your heart and receive the inspired word, the spoken word, the engrafted word, the living word. Joshua 24. And we'll begin at verse number 14 and conclude at verse number 15. Joshua 24, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him with sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil Unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, And my house, we will serve the Lord. If that's in your Bible, you can say amen. Amen. Uh, Kevin has commissioned us to be able to speak from the topic, the power of influence. And what he commissioned me to do as the family life minister is to focus in on the family. And so if you will, uh, I won't do that. That's a joke, y'all. That's a joke. But I will focus somewhat on the family, but I really want to focus on us. Amen. As we move forward into what God really wants us to do, I'm just uh, truly amazed about what God can do and what God has done. But there is a commercial that comes on TV, and uh, some of us might be aware of what uh, this commercial is all about, but it talks about living above the influence. Uh, It's in relation to uh, alcohol. It's in relation to you being uh, influential and not to be able to do those things that will uh, might bring harm or danger to your life. But in the same respect, God is saying to us, that you and I as members of the body of Christ, we must live above the influence. So when we talk and when we discuss and when we share things about influence, I know that there is uh, a lot of definitions that we can come from and we can probably articulate in terms of really defining what influence is. I mean, even from the standpoint of leadership, we know that leadership is about influencing. And as we read and as we can understand, and I know that many of us can go to the Bible and we can uh, pick out and we can summarize and we can look at individuals who were influential in the Bible. 
I mean, uh, just think about it. I mean, there are people in the Bible, yes, we know Christ was influential, but there are other individuals as well that were influential. And, and we chose the text. We chose the text in Joshua because it has rever reverence to the things that God would want us to do and how he would want us to be. And when we look at Joshua, Joshua, as we understand, just, just for a little background in terms of Joshua, Joshua was taken over basically after Moses was dead. Amen. He was commissioned to be the next leader. And so, so God had promised Joshua, he said, look here, I'm going to be with you. Just as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you as well. And so as God's man, Joshua had to commission the people to understand, look here, there's a new person, there's a new leader that God has appointed. And there's some things that God had set already in place with Moses, and now he has given me the baton to be able to move forward with the people and the children of Israel. And so as we look at the text, Joshua says to the people, he says, now therefore, fear the Lord. And serve him with what? Sincerity. And in truth. And he says, and put away the gods which your forefathers served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem in any way evil unto you to serve the Lord, I need for you to do something. I need for you to choose this day. I don't need, I, you, you need to understand that, that, that this day is important. There's a decision that needs to be made. And any time that you are influential, you need to understand that decisions that are made are going to affect what is done and who is going to affect. Now, now let me just let me just let me just be be kind of concise. As parents, whether you like it or not, whether you disagree or don't disagree, you are influential. As a Christian, whether you want to be or you don't want to be, you are influential. And, and so, so, so there are three things that I want to share with you this morning about the power of influence. First of all, there are three L's, and I'm not, loser is not one in there, amen? All right. But there are three L's, the three L's that I want to share with you this morning about the power of influence. Now, first of all, I want you to understand something. Problems are always going to be present in our lives. You, you, you need to understand that. And, and, and problems, God, God presents us problems as tests, as a growth mechanism, if you will, for us to be able to do some things that we ought not or we think that we cannot do on our own. See, don't, don't, don't look at problems and don't look at issues as, as just a me. But God put those things there for us to be able to grow and to develop into what God wants us to be as Christians. So, so I want us to understand, first of all, that when problems occur, and as we know, problems what? They don't last 
always. They, they can be for a season. What you go through in your life, it is a temporal part of your life. It's very temporal. It's for a season, if you will. Things don't just happen as haphazard. But they happen for a reason. So, so, so whatever happens in your life, whatever happens in our lives, whatever happens in the life that you now live, God is trying to tell you and get you to understand that you know what? I have something better for you. And that's when, that's when the power of influence is affected. When, when, when you, when you as, as a Christian, when you have problems in your life, I want you to know that there's somebody else that's looking at you. You, you need to understand that. It, 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 may, it, it, it may not be the child of God in here, but it might be somebody on your job. You never know who you are influencing. So it would behoove us as members of the body of Christ to always remember and to live as God would want us to live as members of his church. See, we have to be able to walk to walk and talk to talk, amen? Because see, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just that crazy enough to believe that, you know what, somebody that I don't even know is looking at me. See, see I know y'all looking at me, and I know we looking at each other, but, but, but see, one of my concerns is that who else is looking at me? Who else is looking at you? So the power of influence, you must, as a Christian, be able to carry that banner because you never know who's going to say, you know what, I, I appreciate what you did. I appreciate that situation. I appreciate that decision that you, I appreciate how you interacted with that individual. You never know who's looking at you. So you and I, as Jesus says, greater is he that lives in you than he is what? That lives in the world. See, so God is looking at us. And he's looking at us to be influential, not only here in worship, but as we go through our daily lives, as we go to work and as we interact with people, God is saying, you know what? I, I, I need to put you on display. And, and I'm looking at how you go handle things and how you go model after me. Amen. And so, you know, I look at I look at these these children. And, 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 and things, sometimes we don't take under consideration. We, we, don't, we don't take under consideration how we interact and how children are easily influenced, not only by what we do, but by what we say. And, and so, so if we are children of God, we're going to have to be able to demonstrate how influential and how influence is so important in our daily lives. See, I, I know it's easy in here. See, you, you, got your, you got your Sunday best on. You got your smile on. You got your, you got your gear on. You know, you, you, your, your attitude is, most of us, our attitudes are halfway right. So we come in here with the expectation is that, you know what, we're coming to worship. But, 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 but don't forget about the things that you undertook and you underwent a week ago. Don't forget about the past that you ran into and had a, a, a situation in your life where you didn't handle things as you should have. But see, it's easy to come in here and face up and smile at one another, knowing good and well that truly, you know, your influence have been dampered by something that occurred in your life. So it's, 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 nothing, it's nothing to be ashamed of. This, this really is about self-examination, church. And, and God wants us to examine 
ourselves. Because you're you going around telling folk that you, you're a child of the king. Well, you might not be verbally doing it, but the way you live and the way you behave, it's in concordance with what God would want us to do. So, so the power of influence, we, we must live, we must live, and we must do God's will. You know, I'm even reminded, I'm even reminded about Job. I'm going to move to the second point, long-suffering. The power of influence causes one to be able to understand long-suffering. And we know what we, you know, we know what that generally means, suffereth long. But see, sometimes we really don't understand what that really is, what that really looks like. Well, well let me just share with you. You know, when, 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 when you go through your trials and tribulations, when it seems that things are not falling into place as though you would want them. When you've been sick and you seem to cannot get well, when you got a relationship that seems to not be working out, when things are not really going the way that you really want them to go, and you seem to have problem after problem, you seem to have issue after issue, and it seems that though they are not going nowhere, even you get to the point where you want to throw in the towel. You want to give up. You, ask, you start doubting yourself and start asking yourself the question, is it worth it? What I'm going through, you know what? I think that, that, that I just need to go ahead and throw in the towel. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of folk being phony with me. I'm tired of folk turning their back and talking about me and then get up in my face and smile as though everything's all right. Oh, I have issue, and I have issue after issue. I have trouble here, and I have trouble there. You know, when is it going to stop? See, that's long-suffering. Suffers long. You can't merely put your hand on it to say, quit. You can't stop the button when you want to stop it. You can't rewind when you want to rewind. You can't fast forward when you want to fast forward. Long suffering, it suffers long. And you know what? I'm even reminded of Job, a man that, that suffered, you know, had everything that he wanted. He had family, he had money, he had everything that, that a person would want in life. And then lost all of it. Went into a state of a, a depression, things start not going the way that he wanted him to go. He was not accustomed to living the way that he was accustomed to living. Things start happening to him, not only mentally, but physically. You know, there's something about when things start to go wrong with you mentally, amen. When your mind ain't right. Hello? When your body starts suffering. You know, I, I can recall, you know, I can recall, you know, you know, you know, I've been working out a little bit. And, 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 and you know, when I first started working out, you know what, my body, it went into shock. Who? Why? Because it was not accustomed to working out as much as I was working out. And my bones was hurting and my body was aching and my stomach, I had cramps and I, and I was walking. Oh, you know, there was, I was bent over and, 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 I, and it, it seemed, they said, what's wrong with you? Well, my body had not been accustomed to working out. I, I took a, 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 you know, a sabbatical for years. When it came to working out, I mean, don't laugh because many of us, amen, y'all don't took some sabbaticals also, amen. But, 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 but what I did, I don't took a sabbatical for several years. And I stopped working out. And then I got this thing called type 2 diabetes. And I said, you know, the doctor said, now, David, if you don't 
lose some weight and eat right and start taking care of yourself, man, I'm going to put you on some insulin. I said, you know what, I'm, I got up. oh, I'm fearful about needles. I, even when they take my blood, I have to, I have to look away. I, I, it, just, it just frightens me. Now, don't y'all try to put no needle in front of me now. But, 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 but you know, but, but in, in essence, what I said, you know what, I got to do something. I got to do something about this. And so I'm starting to work out. I'm starting to lose a little weight. Uh, I'm starting to feel better. Uh, all because this type 2 thing. Okay? But, but, but I, I want you to, to understand that, that Job, he went through a period, church. And I know that, that if you can, if you read the whole story of Job, you can understand what he was going through. His three best friends turned their back on him. And, 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 and you know what? Things like that occur. You know, things happen. You know, when, 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 you, when you go through things, you know, it, it, you know, folk turn their back on you. They say stuff that is not friendly, and they talk about you. They do all kinds of things. You know what? Same thing happened to Job. But through it all, the Bible said that Job maintained his faith, his trust in God. Now, it, it doesn't mean that, you know what, you, you don't, for a minute, that you don't question. Because Job, you know, got into that state of mind where, you know what, you know what, for a minute, we all tend to forget who brought us to where we are. Oh, yeah, you, we, we tend to forget. You, you know, sometimes we get on our high horses and then we feel that, you know what, we, we've accomplished. We feel that we arrived. But, but you know what? God will always bring you back to where you need to be, amen? And so, so with Job, Job understood the God that he served. And so with that, God was able to restore those things to Job that he had lost. And the Bible said that he even got a what? A double portion. And so, so understanding the power of influence, God will be able to do some things for you and to restore, even though that you and I, as members of the body of Christ, we suffer. And sometimes it doesn't seem that it's ever going to end. But God always has a plan for us, just as he has a plan for Joshua in his life. Let me go to one more point. The power of influence. We have to live above the influence when it comes to love. Now, I know, I know, I know many of us, we, we've talked about love and, and there's been service, uh, uh, sermons on love. J.K. just got finished with a series on love. But you know what? Th there has to be something. There must be something when it comes to love that is influential in the lives of God's people. Jesus puts it this way. He says, by this, ye shall know that ye are my disciples. By what? By love. By the way that you and I demonstrate love. There's something about people recognizing how influential you and I are by the way we treat one another, by the way we love, by, by the demonstration and the act of love. And, and you know what, I'm just, I'm not merely, you, you know, again, sometimes we can get love so surface 
You know, it can be so, so you know, so uh, kind of surface type of love. You know, you walk by people and you say, oh, I love you. Hey, I love you. But, but what, uh, again, what does that mean? What does love look like? See, see, you know, we, we, we got it twisted again because, see, sometimes we, we think that, that love is, you know, it, it's never, never anything that's, that's wrong or, or it's always up here high. It, you know, it, no, it's not. Look at the man Jesus. John 3.16, one of our proof texts. God so what? Loved the world that he did what? That he gave his only begotten son. See, there's something about love that you and I, as members of the body of Christ, we have to live above the influence of love. That means that, that my life has to be able to demonstrate that. There must be some coordination. There must be a connection when it comes to tests and when it comes to issues, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to problems. I got to be able to be influential. Look at Jesus, our Savior. Man was beaten. Pierced in his side, he spat on. Hug on a cross, nailed to the cross. You know, they did all kinds of things. They mocked him. They, they did all kinds of things to them. And then you know what? He said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, sometimes people do things to us that they don't even realize what they're doing. And so that's why, you know, you, you and I cannot take things to heart. When people sin against you, God says, you know what, forgive them. See, see there, there, there's something to that. Because, see, if you're not forgiving them, guess what? You're really not forgiving yourself. Here's a man who talks and who lived forgiveness. And in life demonstrated it. And so who, who are we? As Christians. You and I. We have to forgive. And see, so, 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 so what, are you, what are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is that, look here. Because, see, you, you and I, we, we, we get this. We get this, this word. And we read this word. And you know what? Many of us, we can go ahead and, and we can, we can uh, uh, articulate. We can, we can define and we can... Uh, 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 put it in context, and you know what? But the thing that we can't do is live it. Many of us, we, we can say a word, but how many of us are truly living what the book is saying? Because, see, God sends you, and he sends me, he sends us, he sends problems in our lives and he, what he does, he tests us. He gives us a scenario. He gives us a situation and he says, look here, how, I want to see how you can deal with it. But many of us claim that we are children of God. We have the answers. But when it comes down to doing what God has instructed us to do, we fail the test. How many people in your life who you can say that treated you wrong, who did you bad, who put you in a peculiar, very peculiar situation that was uneasy? How many of us can say that we've been lied on and we've been cheated on and, and we've been called everything but a child of God? How many of us? can really say that, you know what, this person did me wrong and still, yet, I love them. How many of you can, 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 can really stand before someone 
that have done you run wrong two or three years ago, five or ten years ago. See, some of us are still holding on to stuff. Family members not able to move forward because of things that happened two or three years ago. Oh, I'm not speaking to her, but yet you call yourself the child of God. How influential is that? And then you have children, you have, you have guests, and you have members, you have neighbors who are looking at you and they're saying, you claim to be a child of God, but your life does not reflect that. You go to work every day, you go, you go to work and you proclaim Christ. But still yet, your relationship, you seem argumentative. You, you are known in your office to be combative. Your behavior is not conducive of a Christian, but you still yet call yourself a child of the king. Something is wrong with this picture. And, and, and so, so, so when you and I look at influence, influence is not only for you, it's for somebody else. Because you never know who's watching. You know what? I'm going to tell you that I was in my childhood. I was not. Let me phrase this right. I wasn't a bad kid, but I was a mischievous kid. I, I did some stuff where I know I should have been put in jail. I, I, I know I should have been to the juvenile detention center. I, I did some stuff. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let me come down here. Wait a minute. I, I think I got something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, let, let. It's on. It's on now. It's on now. It's on now? Okay, it's on now. Listen. When I, when I was in the... Now listen, y'all young boys, don't do this. I'm telling you this. When, when, I, was, when I was in the eighth grade, ninth grade, the ninth grade, that was a few years ago. When I was in ninth grade, just, just a few years ago, uh, I, I was kicked off the bus because... Veronica's aunt, my in-law, was a bus monitor. I didn't, I didn't know her at the time. Amen. But I was kicked off the bus because she thought that I was back on the bus cussing, using profanity, y'all. And I'd never been, I, I, you know, I'm, Brother Burnett, I ain't never been a cusser. Now, I probably said a few words, but I ain't, I ain't never been able to, you know, gather a whole sentence in a paragraph. I ain't never been able to do that. Now, I'm going to admit, now I said, you know, probably one or two things or could say, you know, amen. But, but I couldn't put together all that. Well, she came to the back of the bus and she said, you, I want you off the bus because of all that language you've been using. I said, that wasn't me. I was trying to defend myself. In other words, she, she told the bus man, bus driver, let him off at the corner. Well, it was, you know, luckily I only had to walk two blocks, and then I had to catch the city bus to school. So I got off the bus. So the next day, this is, this is influence, y'all. Because of the influence I had, I got with my partners, and I said, man, what we going to do tomorrow, we going to stone the bus. So they said, okay, man, okay, okay. So what happened is that we caught the city bus, and we got off two, two blocks before 
the city bus going this way to the school. We got off. We hit up on a hill. We got our rocks. And I said, man, here come the bus. And as the bus came, we threw the rocks. And it hit the window. Now see, I wasn't thinking about if the rock hit somebody. I was just upset and angry because she kicked me off the bus and I wanted to get her back. Well, the, 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 the rocks hit and everything and bust the windows. We ran to the, to the city bus, got on the city bus, got back to the school, was in the kitchen or in the cafeteria, sat, sitting down, eating cinnamon rolls and drinking my milk. All of a sudden, the people from the, from the bus got off the bus. They ran to the cafeteria, and they sat down, and they were saying, Quinn's, man, man, uh, somebody stoned the bus, and, and I, I got glass in my hair, and, and well, bro, Burnett, okay, okay, but anyway, uh, uh, I got glass in my hair. I said, man, let me take some of that glass. I said, man, you kidding. You, you lying. I said, yeah, man, somebody. I said, you, oh, man, I'm sorry. Y'all didn't get hurt. No, nobody got hurt, man, but it was, it was kind of frightening. I said, oh, okay. Never said a word. The next day, I said, we're going to do the same thing. <laughs> it, it just wasn't good enough to just do it one day. Bro, Twyman, you know, I, I, I just want to do it again. Got up there, got off the city bus, got on the hill, getting ready to throw the, throw the, throw the rock. And then I noticed that pastor, uh, oh my goodness, the pastor was riding behind the bus. He was, he was in charge of transportation for the school district. So as I got ready to throw the rock, I said, oh, my goodness, that's the pastor. So I put the rock down, and what I did, got on the bus and went to school. What I'm saying, church, is that the power of influence. I influenced some folk to do something wrong that I know was wrong. But see, that's how influence works. And, and you know what? That that's just happened to be influence on the negative side. I, I'm just thinking about all the people in our lives that we've seen, how they are and how they became influential. I mean, look at some of the people in history. Look at the, the, the JFK and look at the Malcolm X and look at, look at Muhammad Ali. Look at all the people that have been influential. But even look at the leadership here. The eldership and the, the deacons and the ministers. You know what? There, there are young people out there that need to be influenced by the leadership. That they can look at themselves and one day say, you know what? I want to be a bishop one day. I, I, want, to be, I want to be able to serve. I want to be able to, to, to do uh, uh, what Gerald and all these brothers are doing. I want to be able to lead songs. I want to be able to be influential when it comes to doing the right thing. But I'm asking you today. Are you being influential? Are you living the type of life that others can see you as being influential? Are you, are you despite what you're going through, despite what you may face in your daily life, are you influential? when it comes to long suffering. Because see, somebody, somebody is looking at you and saying, you know what? One day, I want to be j just like you. You, you. you might not even know that. Kid, little kids, when they grow up, 
What did they say? I want to be just like my daddy. That's influence. Because they see their daddy doing something that's right. You know what? I, I want to I be influential just like my mom. You know, my mom, you know, despite her, you know, not being able to do and not being able to have certain things. And you know what? But my mom loves me. And my mom treats me very good. You know, that's, that's influential. That's influence, church. And then we got to love. You know what? I, I, I've, I, you know, I got I to gotta admit, you know, I, I've, I, I've, uh, I've done some things wrong in my life. And I know that, that uh, if I keep living, I'm going to still do some things wrong. But it's not intentionally. But I'm reminded of David, the David in the Bible. I'm reminded of Psalms chapter 51. You remember when David committed sin with Bathsheba, had Uriah killed? You know, all the things that David did wrong in Psalms 51 is basically him repenting to God. There's a verse in there that says, it says, purge me, cleanse me, key words, restore me. And, and, and God really wants to do the same thing for us. See, when things happen and, and things are going to happen, things, you know, everything is not going to go accordingly to the way you want them to go. But David had influence over entire nation. Just think about that had influence over entire nation, God's man, and he falls and then recognizes his failure to do and to live up to the expectations of what God would want him to do and how he was to be as God's leader. But then we see another side of David. We see David repenting. We see David changing because he realizes and he understands that, you know what, I, I, I've been God's spokesperson. I was able to influence not only, not only my family, but I was able to, to influence our entire nation. And some of us today, you need to understand that your influence speaks volumes of what you do and what you say. And so, with this, I'm going to close. I pray and I ask God that whatever I do, that he'll help me to be able to do it because I know I can't do it by myself. And so, as, as, as Joshua, as we see Joshua, and, 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 and he, he discusses and he talks about, you know what, if it seems evil to you to this day, choose who you will serve. God is saying to you, there's a choice that needs to be made. And he says, Joshua backs it up, he says, as for me, see, it, it has to come down to self. Because, see, you, you can't make me do nothing that I want to do. You, you can't, I don't care how bad or how mad or what you say, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. If I'm going to jail, it's going to be because I want to go to jail. Hello? If, if, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna say something to you, sis, out of line, it's gonna be because I want to say something. It, it's not because you know you look. Don't take this offensive now. You look nice, all right. But 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 just because you look nice, it's not gonna take me somewhere else where I don't need to go. Amen. 
See, you're not gonna you're not gonna determine what I gonna do because what you want me to do. You're not going to control me, and no one should control you. When it comes to that point, guess what? You you just somebody else's. You belong to somebody else. See, so I don't care how angry, how mad, and how upset you become. Brother, brother, brother Burnett, you're not going to take me out of my zone. I'm going to stay focused in on what Christ, you know what? I know you said some things bad to me. I know you did me wrong. I know you talked about me. I know you talked about my wife. I know, you, I'm not, okay, I'm not, okay, he really didn't do that. I'm just using that as an illustration, okay? But you see what I'm saying? Don't, don't let no one. Don't let no one take you out of your zone, out of what Christ will want you to be. And so what we need to understand as members of the church, we got to understand that it takes all of that and some more. Because there's some times, Brother Twyman, there's some times where I wanted to go upside someone's head. I, 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 I wanted to bring it back. I wanted to bring those years back of when I was in the ring. I wanted to test just how, ooh, I, deacon, 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 deacon. Okay, okay. That, but see, that's how sometimes people will make you feel. Okay? And, and I, know you, I know you've been in that situation. Some of us have been in that situation. But you know what? Don't let the devil, because that's all who it is take you off your game you know you you show up every day and you you demonstrate what Christ and how he will want you to be because you never know who's looking at you amen if you're here this morning and you're not a member of the Lord's church you know what God wants you to be influential for him he wants you to be able to show the world show others just what he can do and what he will do if you're here this morning and you are subject to the Lord's invitation the Bible tells us that if you want to be a Christian first you must hear the word you must hear the gospel well, you might be saying, well, what is the gospel, Brother Quinns? Well, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's knowing that he died and he was buried, and upon the third day, according to Scripture, that he rose from the grave. Well, you can find that over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. You must believe that gospel. The Bible then says, faith then comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. The more you hear God's Word, guess what? the more faith you're going to have, the more trust you're going to have, the more influence you're going to have. Then you must confess Christ. You must acknowledge that he is the Christ, that he is the Son of God. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 32 and verse number 33. And then you must repent. Repentance is a change of heart which results in a change of mind. Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5. And then you must go down into the watery grave of baptism, for baptism is for the remission of sin. You know what? You know what? All of us, all of us in here have done something that we're not proud of. But you know what? I, I, and, and I'm not proud. Believe me, I, I was not trying to brag when, it, when, I, when I stoned the bus. That, that, I, I felt very bad. But you know what? God has forgiven me. I'm just thankful that no one was hurt. It was a childish thing to do. It was a bad thing to do. But I'm just, I'm just thankful that God gave me a second chance. Now, now, if you're here and you are a member of the Lord's church, and, and you know what? You haven't been demonstrating your influence. You know, why don't you get that right now? You, you need to understand that, you know what? Not, not only church members, it's easy for church members to look at you. And they, oh, Brother Price, he's so influential. You know, it, you know we can all say, you know, oh, Brother Carr, you know, he's so influential. You know, the bishop, you know, it's, it's easy to do that at church. But when it comes down 
to situations, when you're in a tight, when you're in a fix, when you know things are not going your way and tempers start to flare. And you know what? And then, then there's an altercation and the altercation leads to something else. And the altercation and that leads to something else. You know what? When your temper gets to the point where it's boiling over and you just say, you know what? Enough is enough. You know, I'm ready. You know what? Let's get it. Let's get it on. Because I'm, I'm tired of this. You know, Marvin used to say that a long time, you know, let, let's get it on. But he was talking about something else. But I'm talking about fighting. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, when you, when you, you was in the playground, I don't know if this happened to you, but you, we were in the playground a long time ago. You know what? You know, they used to put them little sticks on the, you know, no one wanted to, yeah, no one, no one wanted to throw the first punch. But what we used to do, we used to put a little stick on our shoulder and, and you know what we used to do? We used to tap it off, you know, and then that's how basically the start begins. And you know what? It's no, it, it's no different. It's no different today. We just not use it. We just not putting sticks on our shoulders. But every time you say something wrong that discourages me, every time you say something that I don't want to hear, every time you do something that I don't like, every time that you try to block me or try to be a hater or whatever it is, you know, that's when it begins. And you and I have to be above the influence when it comes to stuff of that nature. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. If you're here today and you are subject to the Lord's invitation, we want you to stand. This message was brought to you by Mountain View Church of Christ. Visit our website at mtviewcoc.org for more information about what we're doing and how you can be involved in ministry and spreading the word of God. Believe. Become. Belong. Come out to the Mountain View Church of Christ. mtviewcoc.org.